I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations Oh, cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting But then you came along and proved me all wrong, I was so mistaken Cause you glue all the pieces back together Hi friends, good morning, it is a beautiful day here in Rome, the temperature is kind of changing. It's not really summer anymore. Today I wanted to head over to Barberini to show you a church that I have heard about and I've seen so many beautiful photos of but I have never been to before and I wanted to bring you along. I've tried to make a video about this in the past but when I tried to go last time it was closed and uh, there were transportation strikes and it was just a big mess so I'm going to try again to go there today. Last night I had to go run a few errands and I just I wanted to show you look how beautiful this is what running errands in Rome looks like. We're also going to stop and see this random, giant, beautiful fountain that I'm pretty sure you might not have heard of. So it's along the way. I wanted to show you that too. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm excited to spend the day with you. And if you haven't, go ahead and click the subscribe button below if you would like to see more about Rome and my life living here. All right, let's uh, let's get going. <laughs> church is called Chiesa di San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane and it has that name because it's right here at the intersection of these four fountains. This church also has a nickname San Carlino, Little Carlo, because of its tiny size. This church is important because Borromini did some important works here and he worked here for free. He didn't have a big budget for the materials. You don't only find the genius of Borromini as an architect, but inside this church you can really notice the sweetness of the shapes and it feels soft and delicate and maybe like a cloud. He really is a master playing with the light and he turned those really cheap materials into something very precious. His works were not appreciated at the time, however. The taste of the time in the 1600s was a different style with the overwhelming, lush, and colorful mix of expensive marbles, but Borromini's style is much closer to our modern tastes today, and maybe that's why we love it so much. There was a group of students here learning about the details of the church, so I snuck in before them to see it without anyone else in there. I always love it when I get churches to myself for a few minutes. But down the corridor there was this sign that said crypt and no one was there for information or anything so I just walked down the hallway to explore a little bit and it just felt really creepy like <laughs> there was just an old spiral staircase leading down to some place with no lights and I was all alone and yeah I just I, I didn't feel up for that today. <laughs> So I bet a lot of you have never even seen this fountain before, but it's like really huge and kind of in the middle of a busy street. And uh, anyway, I wanted to show it to you today. This is called the Fontana dell'Acqua Felice, also called the Fountain of Moses, and it was built in 1585. So at that time, in 1585, only one of the ancient Roman aqueducts which brought water to the city, the Aqua Vergine, was still being maintained and working. Everyone in Rome who wanted clean drinking water had to go to the only fountain near the site of today's Trevi Fountain. Pope Sixtus V, Felice Peretti, took on the responsibility of restoring other aqueducts, including this one, the Aqua Alessandrina, which he renamed Aqua Felice after after himself. <laughs> The statue of Moses was criticized at the time for its really large size, but the fountain achieved its political purpose. It was a statement of how the Catholic Church, unlike the Protestant Reformation, was serving the needs of the people of Rome. It also achieved its social purpose of reviving this neighborhood, which had been a rustic area of villas, and it was turned into a thriving urban neighborhood by the arrival of good drinking water supply. 
I also stopped inside this church because it looked like a special one with its round shape and I was very curious about it. So its name is the Chiesa di San Bernardo alla Terme and I found out later when I came home and googled it that this church was actually built on the remains of a circular tower which marked a corner in the southwestern perimeter wall of the Baths of Diocletian. I had the thought of, wow, this is kind of like the Pantheon when I stepped inside and Wikipedia actually says, quote, the structure of San Bernardo alle Terme is similar to the Pantheon since it is cylindrical with a dome and an oculus, end quote. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos about Rome and I will see you in the next one. Ciao friends.